And welcome back to the Career Build Series 2023. This is episode number 15. And so in the last episode, did a bunch of uh, work on the tug. I started doing a bunch of work off screen on the tug as well. That way, you know, I figured uh, I don't want this to be too much building. And a lot of it was just some in-depth microcontroller stuff. Um, a little bit of cleanup. I did um, shorten the pilot house. So it's a little bit smaller, a little bit more realistic now. Just move some stuff around because of that. Um, I'd like to do some missions here and um, also maybe try to get that harbor generator in and the def system. So uh, let's go ahead and we'll get started and we'll look for a mission. So let's check the map out here. All right, good. So we have a speedster in distress requesting assistance. Seven grand, that's good money. Extinguish all fires and rescue two casualties. So that's nice and close. Let's go hit that. So we should have no problem finding that. All right, and I'll go through some of the um, some of the changes here that I did on the tug. So quite a bit, uh, but let's get operating first. All right, so tug is here. So I redid. Whoa, that needs to be fixed. Already haven't fixed it. Oh, it's electrical. That's why. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so let me see this. Where do we got here? All right, already having issues here. That's plugged there, and then so this wasn't plugged in. That was why that causes that problem, and so this needs to go to the battery. All right, let's try this. All right, so that is an access hatch. So I added an access hatch. Um, IRL, you'd have these. You'd be able to lift that hatch, and then you can get in there and move the engines. Generally, it'd probably actually be further back, but I couldn't really do that. I shortened the pilot house. The pilot house is much shorter now. Looks more proportional, more correct. Um, a little bit tighter in there. I did a ton of um, light mast work, and so I redid all of it and rewrote it, and it was quite um, <laughs> quite an endeavor. Um, it was pretty ugly before. I started using Boolean blocks now, and I got the lights set up correctly, so we'll go through that. Um, so this is currently a lot shorter, and I like this. It's a little bit tighter now, so we have two seats here. Uh, this is kind of cool area here. If we open that up, as you can see, we have firefighting equipment, uh, defib, cable, flare gun, and then I'll put some stuff up here. So that's kind of a functional area. Uh, so that's, you know, that's a lot of what I did. So let's go ahead and get started here. All right, and we'll go do this rescue quickly. So I like the new shorter pilot house. Let me just make sure that Weather override is up, off. That was correct. Okay, good. Vehicle damage on. Just checking everything, making sure it's good. All right, we'll go look for this this rescue here. Now yeah, the pod's probably moving a little bit faster than I like. Should change that. So if we look at the map, it's just to our north here. So. Especially with comp seeds, it shouldn't be a problem finding it. I don't know why my other pod so uh it seems super quick to me right now. Alright, so I uh I'll go ahead and I will put on third person up oh, third person vehicle is what I want. There we go. Uh just to show you some of the stuff. So the pilot house as you can see is much shorter now. It was another at least four blocks longer three or four blocks, definitely four blocks, I think, longer. Shorten that up. The light mast here, let's actually uh, put on standard uh, navigating. I have to fix all of the indicators on them. But uh, we... Oh. And I already see a problem with that. So the uh, front should be on. Front mast should be on. So that's probably an electrical issue. I see the boat there. Kind of cheating looking in third person, but... There he is. Now that might be... That's them. Okay. So we'll go get this person. Let's consult the map here. So it says extinguish all fires and rescue two casualties. All right, take them to the hospital. So I like the new shorter pilot house. That was, I think, a good improvement. I had to redo just a bunch of the piping because of that. Now, uh, if we look at my uh, firefighting nozzle, I redid that, made it, I think it'll look a little bit better. 
Still not perfect, but, um, you know, I think some good additions to the tug. The light mast took a lot of work. Um, so, let me see what else is broken on it. So one is anchor light. That's broken. Okay. Three. Wow. Is the Looks like a bunch is broken, man. I think it's all electrical connections. That's got to be electrical connections because I did it in my test world, and if I had infinite electricity on, that would be it. But I'll look at it and, and uh, when we get back. So I went through. There were a ton of different. Um, there are a ton of different lighting configurations for different things. So you have anchor. You have when you're doing standard navigation, like we're doing now. There are two forms of towing. There's towing if you are. So we're a vessel under 50 meters. If you're a vessel over 50 meters, you need some a front mast as well and some different lighting. But we're under 50 meters, so we fit within that category for towing. And the cable is less than 200 meters. We have a certain light setup. If the we're towing and the cable is longer than 200 meters, we have a different setup as well. So those were all implemented. And so it took a bunch of work. And then if we're pushing a barge, depend upon if we're in combination or if we're not in combination, there's different ones there. Uh, if we run aground, if we're disabled. And right, let's fire this. Uh, where are we at here? Fire nozzle. All right. Let's aim up and right. Up and right. I think they did a, kind of a stealth mission pass. I'm getting a bunch of missions I haven't seen before with vehicles I haven't seen before. And I play quite a bit of creative. Or uh, career, rather. All right, let's go to the next one. See, I can get out of my seat with the panel. That's one of the things that's nice with that is I can go like this. Theoretically. There we go. And that's out. Nice, nice, nice. So, good use of... Oops, didn't mean to do that. Good use of the water cannon. Let's get a quick little bit of a screenshot of here. I should have done it while I was uh, using the fire cannon, but whatever. All right, let's go up forward a little bit. One thing I would like to see them do with missions is, so I can see why you wouldn't want to make it a uh, recommend, you know, a uh, mandatory, but make it so, for example, that I would get a bonus if I towed this ship in. So say, you know, you can do this, and if you bring the ship in, you get a bonus. And so that way, it w you know, it makes sense if you have something like a tugboat. All right, so much cozier interior now, I find, on the tug. With it being a little bit, uh, you know, not having as large of a pilot house. I really like how I set that. Ooh, hello. Why are you standing on things? I think there were two. I might engage in piracy. There's a lot of good gear and equipment here. So. There we go. And so this is also a... The seats are numbered for Stormlink. Do we have a... So this is a fishing boat. Hmm. Curious how long this has been in. Uh, did they, uh, the hinting at a fishing DLC? All right, right there. Okay, good. So I'm gonna tow this in. It's a, it's, it's a tugboat, you know. And I, this is the sort of thing I enjoy. I just wish my lights were working, man. I should have checked them before we left. I, I did do a bunch of testing, but again, it was in my test world, so I could have had something on. I could have also broken it too. Uh, it was quite. Uh, it's reasonably complex. I will show you the microcontroller. I, I started making a video of showing you me fixing it, and it was just, it was not going to be fun. It was a lot of, like, why did I do this, fixing it? But it's, you know, it's one of the reasons I like to rewrite panels. You know, a lot of people have given the devs grief over their, la over their update about how, you know, essentially the spaghetti code, and they're going to make a new game. And I think, you know, they're kind of misreading. The, you know, people are... To a certain extent, I think misreading this is, you know, every every game gets like this, and so it's nice to get in there and have what is that winch? Now my winch isn't working. All right, man. Bunch of problems here. 
I must have, uh, you know what it is? I probably del broke an electrical connection here. But anyway, so, you know, it, it brought it into pretty stark focus with me trying to fix just my lighting system on this was the, it's a lot of, um, essentially legacy code of me, you know, le legacy logic, let's put it that way. Did I leave that door open? That will sink me if I did. I did. Oh, crap, 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 crap. Get out, get out, get out, get out. Whoo! I, uh, I left the door open. That sucker's sinking. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, no! <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, no! Come on, man. <laughs> oh, damn on. I, I almost... <laughs> I was afraid it was going to sink with me, uh, towing it. Whatever. All right, I've made absolutely everything worse. Why am I going in a circle? So something's up with my azipods, too. They seem super twitchy right now. I have to fix those. But uh, anyway, so, um, you know, when I went into that simple, you know, good night, good night, sweet prince, went in that super simple lighting panel, which it wasn't super simple. It's reasonably complex. But um, when I went into that panel... You know, I was like, why did I do this? It was spaghetti. It was miserable. And it, and you could definitely see, you know, I'm certainly no programmer. And you could certainly see why it is advantageous sometimes to start over. And it's kind of like a little microcosm of what's going on in the game. And, you know, I, I, I've kind of had my rants and written a couple posts about this. You know, and I one of the games I talk about that I played a lot of, I've had many editions of it, was Farming Sim. And so... I'll go up here. Oh, why is display capture on? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to look at uh, all the different versions of Farming Sim. And Farming Sim used to come out every year. And so, trying to see. It used to be a German game. You know, and it was like, I forget what it is in German. It's, it's some L word. Um, I'll probably end up seeing it here, but... What did I have? Was Farming Sim 15? No, it definitely had the one before that. Farming Sim 13. You know, so I don't know when it came to Steam either, but, like, I had, I guarantee I had back Farming Sim 13 at least. I had earlier than that. I guarantee it. You know, and so I'll look up on Wikipedia or something Farming Sim, but Farming Sim used to come out every two years. And so I really don't remember anyone getting annoyed with the game coming out every two years it was it was something that you know people looked at as a reasonably positive thing you had to rebuy the you know you had to buy a new edition of the game you know people had to remake mods for the game but every edition they came out with new innovations there were limitations with the with the engine there were limitations you know they're using giants engine their own engine and there were limitations with the engine, and they would get to a point where they couldn't do certain things. They didn't have multiplayer, so Farming Sim 2008 um, was the first edition. Then it came out with Farming Sim 2009. So that came out. So that came out the second year. So there was one year they came out with a new game. Then it was 11, 13, 15, 17, 19, 20, 22, and so. You know, the first the first two games were within a year of one another, and then it was every two years after that. And every time it came out, there were there were engine and physics limitations. Where, for example, I, one of the ones that I remember was you couldn't load bales onto a trailer. You couldn't even really pick bales up with a forklift because they would just like flick and fly off. The physics wasn't very good. The modders tr tried to make it work. They had some workarounds, but they weren't great. But the developer saw that it was an important thing to the community to have the ability to, um, you know, move and transport bales on trailers. You also couldn't put vehicles on trailers because there there was no friction; they would slide right off. And so they started adding things, which was there was a mod. It was like something. It was lock something. You could actually lock the bales on. You could lock vehicles on. And so they put something in like that, that when you put it on a trailer, it would lock to it. You could press a button, and it would actually just lock it. As long as it was within the square, anything in that square would lock in place. And then they had some where they would automatically self-load, and essentially what it was doing was deleting the bale and putting up an imaginary bale, you know, a visual bale, but it wasn't uh, 
a real bale there. And then when you would get there, it would drop a bunch of bales you could handle. And then they moved on to where you had physicalized straps. And what this allowed you to do is instead of it kind of deleting all the bales you put on there, morphing in these fake bales, and then when you stop putting in new bales you could handle, it would actually use the exact bales you had, and you'd put a strap over them, and if you had one bale crooked, it would stay crooked because you were just strapping it down. And so it also allowed for you to put vehicles on there. And I, I think this is a good analogy for storm marks and what's going on here is, you know, eventually, you know, you think about, you know, I try to think of it as a little microcosm of when I'm making a build. You know, that's the only real design stuff that I do. And so when I'm making a build here, you know, I have all these grand notions. I have these pathways I think I'm going to go, especially when I'm making microcontrollers. I think it's going to work this way or this way or this way. And I'm surprised by sometimes where I have to go and how it happens. And especially I look back at my old microcontrollers and I'm like oh my god that's a mess why would you ever do it that way and if I if I had to go back to every one of my old microcontrollers to, to do stuff and try to keep the old you know code I'm just gonna use code as kind of a because it's an, anal an, an an analogy if I had to use my old code it would be an absolute zoo and so I certainly feel for the devs in that you know the game's not perfect they're certainly not perfect I have my own issues with how they do things, but I think a lot of the vitriol, frankly, is, I think, overblown, and I think a lot of people are looking at this in a very negative light. There's a lot of people who think that they're already done with Stormarks. They're not. You know, they, they, uh, they've stated that they have plans through 2023. You know, it was supposed to be the major update that came out that day, and it just wasn't ready, and so they had a at the end of the you know, quickly put something out, and they mentioned to us that they're building a new game, which I think we should be excited about, and they're le going to learn a lot of lessons from what happened here. They're also seeing what we want. You know, we, whether, you know, you know, whether you're positive or negative towards how they are or their community engagement or whatever you want to call it, they're a business, and they want to make as much profit as possible, like any business, which is no problem with that. And so they, as their customers, they're looking at us and they're saying, okay, well, what are people doing in game? This is one of the reasons why they added weapons DLC. You know, they saw that a lot of the people were making weapons without the actual parts. And so they decided they were going to make it a DLC, which I completely 100% agree with. They need to keep the lights on. And so they saw where the community was. Ooh, there's another one, Jews. Um, and they decided to make the game go that direction. And so one of the things that, you know, if I'm going to theory craft and hypothesize and all this stuff here is, you know, they said it's not going to be Stormworks 2. And I think, but it's going to be another vehicle building game, phys physics game. Uh, you know, I, I wish I had the exact quote. I'll, I'll grab that really quick. I'll grab the exact quote. So the exact wording is a design and vehicle building game. So like Stormworks, but, you know, it's... I think one of the reasons why they don't want to call it Stormworks 2 in my with, with my hypotheses here is you know the, you you always see that controversy of people saying oh it's supposed to be a search and rescue game why have you know ore mining it's supposed to be this why have this at its heart where this game is miles above the rest above every other game I've played frankly especially in the genre is it has an incredibly in-depth building system where you can go in, make microcontrollers, like, you know, I can make my tugboat perform exactly how I want. And very few games have that. And, like, I saw a couple comments of people like, oh, they should make it simple to build, like, simple planes. Well, frankly, I would say to that person, well, this isn't the game for you. You know, there are plenty of games that are incredibly simple. I haven't played a lot of them, but, like, Sp Space Engineers, you know, I played that. That's incredibly simple, simplistic building. You know, Trail Makers, from my understanding, is an incredibly simplistic building, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just not this game. And so there are dozens of games that have an incredibly simple building mechanic, and it's kind of, and that's great for a lot of people. It has a very low floor. You can easily get in and build something and have it work. And somebody was saying, oh, like, you know, and, and I think they were saying trail makers, you just, or simple planes. They said simple planes, you just, you don't have to do all this, like, making sure things are balanced. You just, you know, you put the things in the plane and it works. 
Well, that's not really a physics building game mu very much. That is a, an overly simplified arcadey plane building game, and that's fine, and I'm glad people enjoy that. But it's not what this game is, how this game is. And there are dozens of those games that have incredibly simplistic building. It's nice to have one that has incredibly complex building, where you have to make sure that the center of lift is in line with the center of gravity. People, you know consistently telling me how or you know they're saying on forums that you know planes planes suck in stormworks I, you can't land a plane in stormworks well you guys have seen me land plenty of planes in stormworks perfectly on the numbers every time and that's because I have experience in this and so because the game's complex if you don't have experience or if you don't educate yourself or it's one of the reasons I make a lot of tutorials is to help people who might not know these things innately or from their experience if you don't know these things, a lot of people, I think, are blaming the game for issues they're having with their own understanding of design and physics. You know, and so it was like with the, air, you know, I made an uh, airplane design tutorial, and it was because, you know, I was seeing people, and they said, oh, the physics sucks, you know, my planes, you know, can barely fly. Well, you look at their plane, and their center of gravity and their center of lift are not in line. Their fuel is outside of the center of gravity envelope, so as they burn fuel, it's making it so that their center of gravity shifts, and now they no longer have the same center of gravity, and the plane isn't as stable anymore. Well, if you don't have a degree in aeronautical science like I do, you might not know that. You know, and so they'll either blame the game or they'll you know, want a simpler game. Well, frankly, I'm, I don't want this game to be simpler. I want it to be like it is. I want it to be a challenge. I want you to learn something. You know, a lot of this thing, I thought I'd never be able to make a microcontroller until I did. And then I said, oh, I'll never be able to make an autopilot. That's too complicated. And then I made an autopilot. And then you start getting some confidence and you say, hey, I can make a bunch of these things. And once you get that confidence, I think you're off to the races. And so that's one of the, one of the reasons why I hope this, you know, this new game again this game is far from dead it's it's mainly a single player building game and i think where i'm excited for the next game and where i think a lot of the people especially the detract or people who've had issues let's put it that way with with this game where i think they'll probably you know it, it's in their best interest as well is for example if you love multiplayer which i don't play much multiplayer i play m multiplayer you know with the crew on uh on Fridays, and you know, sometimes we have six, seven people in there. We're launching a bunch of stuff, and we have very few problems. And so, I, it's heavily dependent on your PC. It's heavily dependent on your internet. If you're having internet issues, if you have PC issues, you're not going to have a good time, and you might blame the game when it's not the game. And so, there are people I think who, uh, of course, have legitimate issues with multiplayer. There are legitimate issues with multiplayer, but there are a lot who are also it's on their end, and they're blaming the game. And part of it's very understandable is this, in, you know, if I'm incorrect in this, I'm trying to remember back the history of the game. I might not be getting it perfectly correct, but the game was not initially intended as a multiplayer game, in my understanding. And so they then were trying to cobble the game together as a multiplayer game. Well, when you're making a multiplayer game, you really need that in the forefront that needs to be the purpose of the game to be multiplayer you need to build it from the ground up and even games that are built from the ground up to be multiplayer are not always perfect in multiplayer and so when it's an afterthought it's problematic and so another analogy i brought up before was kerbal space program kerbal space program does not have multiplayer and that was a feature that the, um, the community was asking for for a very long time multiplayer multiplayer please multiplayer and they essentially said we can't do it the game is not designed for multiplayer, and part of it is, I think they would have run into the same problem Stormworks had. If you try to essentially contort and Frankenstein the game to work in multiplayer, it wouldn't work very well. And so you need to build it from scratch to do that. And Kerbal 2 is coming out end of the month in beta after many years. And part of that, I think, and, and it's on the roadmap to have multiplayer. It's not even coming out with multiplayer right away, I believe. And part of that is it's incredibly hard to make a game where you have all these parts, right? I can put the, like, look at all these parts. Each one of these is a block. Each one of these has different functions. I have tons of microcontrollers in here doing complex calculations. 
And so not only does it need to work for me on this vehicle, but if somebody goes flying over in a, a jet at 400 knots, they also have to make sure that their screen is reading all the little calculations my vehicle is doing. That seems like an impossible task to me, and I'm shocked that it works as well as it does. And, you know, I, I think, you know, in order to get multiplayer to work properly, it needs to be innately in there. And so it's like certain things that, you know, so when people are just like fix multiplayer, it can't be fixed. You know, you, you know, you could try to turn your car into a truck, but it's better sometimes to go buy a truck, you know. And so we, they can try to shoehorn a better multiplayer into this game, or they can start fresh and from scratch try to make it a, a multiplayer game. And I think that's going to be better. And there are certain elements with this game, for example, rope physics. I would love it if rope physics was better. And, and for example, you see all this, all these turnbuckles and everything I put in here. I would love it if I could take the cable, go through here, and it would actually rub on the surfaces and it wouldn't drop through. I'd love to be able to put an anchor that I can shoot through the side and hook to something and have it drag up the surface. I can't do that. Well, guess what? It's probably not within the physics engine. But in the next game, it could be because they could say, oh, well, you know, people have been asking for years for Stormarks to have the ability to have ropes interact physically. So that's something we should put in the new engine, you know. And so that's very, I'm very optimistic about this. I think I'm hoping it will be good, you know, and so that's something I'm looking forward to. So let's uh, go ahead and I'm just going to recall this. I put enough fuel in. Hopefully it recalls it all. Usually it does, but um, I've just been sucking some in and I was continuing to talk anyway. So let's grab this and I'll kind of show you some of the things I worked on. All right, so let's go in here. So a little bit, a little bit uh, ranty, but it's more. I'm just trying to share my kind of my opinions on it, and I'm seeing a lot of misinformation from uh, from people who it, it's quite obvious did not read, have not been reading the updates, you know. And so they've talked multiple times with the updates, and you know, it, it just seems like you have a lot of people not following along, and then they're getting things second and third hand. So. You know, we'll definitely have to see what happens, but, um, you know, I'm very hopeful. Let's, uh, okay, so let's go ahead and look at the light tower. So I redid this light tower. So essentially what we have here is all the lighting systems. Let me quickly update this and see what my electricity is doing, because I think it's a, it's got to be an electrical problem. So, okay, top to here. Uh, actually, you know what? It could be a connection issue to bow mass forward. Okay, that's what that is. It's a connection. What, what is this? Oh, I connect these wrong, I think. Mast forward. Oh, okay. Oh, bow mast forward shouldn't be connected. All right. I'm just going through these for the light bar here. Port nav. What? Port nav is there. Starboard nav. Bow mast forward's fine. Bow mast top. Okay. Bow mast top. Top. Uh, top starboard. Okay, so I need to rename some of these. So that should be top red center. Okay. So I want to show you this light mast. Uh, I, I redid a bunch of this, but it's not perfect. Top red center. Okay. I centralized a lot of these too. I like that look a little bit better. All right, so top red center. That is... Red center bottom, that's fine. That is red bottom starboard. I got rid of that, so that should be disconnected. That is stern. That is mast anchor. That is white center forward. That is amber tow light. That is mast forward. Top, uh, center top red. Nope, so that should be center middle. That should be uh, red. Um, Center, middle, red. Center, middle, red. Center, middle, red. Okay, center, middle, red. Okay, let's see why this is having issues here. So, mast anchor. Mast anchor is on top now. Top red center. So I pretty much central. I made this look like that so it was easier to find them. Like that. And then this one will go there. 
All right, so when I turn on the regular nav, it should be reading this. Let me double check this. So this is my standard light. So for most of my stuff, my standard light should come on. What is that? Red, bottom, starboard. That's fine. That should be disconnected. All right, let's uh, give it a... Let me quickly walk through the electricity and see if that's the issue. So let's check that. It's having issues here, so... That's top there. Okay, right there. That That's causing all of that issue there. So I do all lights together. That's how I tend to plug. All right, good. And then it gets to here, and it is connected to nothing. So I moved a bunch of these. I deleted one. That would be why. I deleted, I think, one, a couple of them at least. So and that's going to go off of that. So that should be good. This can go. It's a sensor that will connect to transponder locator when I finally put that in. All right. So that's good. So let's go ahead and let's save this. Uh, let's see, tug shortening, I did tug light work, so that's most recent. So the tug is a lot shorter now, as you can see. I cut off quite a bit in the back there. I like this better with it being shorter. I really like the interior. I, You know, I kind of have to jog around. It feels tight like a ship should feel in there. I really like that a lot. That's, uh, that's pretty neat to me. All right, the water cannon's working pretty well. Do we have any other real issues? I don't think so. Let's go ahead, and I'm going to... We only have 39,000 right now. Hmm. How do we have so little money? I delivered I delivered I put out a fire that was 3 grand. Yeah, I I put out a fire that was 3 grand and then I brought two people that was almost another 4 grand that would have been about 7 grand and then I picked up two loot crates and I'm only at 30 grand. Huh. That's interesting. I don't know. Oh well. Oh, I bought fuel and I put it in the base. That's why. I bought a I bought like eight eight grand worth of fuel. So let's spawn this really quick. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'll show you the light mask. Let's get out there. It's nice and dark. One of the reasons it precipitated me one so see how it's listing? That's because the game fills the port tank first. The starboard tank will automatically equalize. I have uh just an equalizing pipe in there, so We'll always start like this cr little crooked, probably. So I'm going to go to nav. There we go. We're lighting up now. Let's head on out. Let's stick on our reds and dim them out. All right, so let's look at this ship. So we have our nav lights on. So we have a white forward. We have red on the port, green on the, on the starboard. They should be seen 120 degrees, so all the way up to 120. And then we have a white stern. All right. Uh, so the number one option is at anchor. So if we were just sitting out here on it on anchor and taking a snooze, it would look like that all around. We then have three is going to be. Uh, what is three? Is three towing? Three. I thought three was towing, but oh no no. It was, Okay, I know what three is. See how we have the second white on? If we are pushing a barge, this is what it will look like. So if we're pushing a barge, and let's say we're actually attached to the barge, uh, that's called combination. We uh, This one's not going to be com a combination barge uh, tug. Uh, I would love to make a combination. What that is, is that is actually, let me show you the diagram. So here's the lighting diagram. So this has, you know, a bunch of different definitions but you can see I went through this cleaned up my lighting on here and so I, I want to show you some of these um, tug diagrams here and so where are we at here so this is dependent upon if we're towing so here we are see we're we're a vessel less than 50 meters in length and the tow exceeds 200 meters so if our cable is longer than 200 meters the uh, you notice we'll have these three whites and then standards plus this amber toe. If it's uh, 50 meters less, you know, if our vehicle is less than 50 meters and our tow length is less than 200 meters, we should have two on there. So this is towing. And then this is what the barge needs when we're towing. We're going to be doing a bunch of that. And then we have, if we're pushing, so this is a composite unit. 
And so the way a composite unit works is you see you have the hull shape there. It actually slots into the barge and it makes it one unit. And when you have that one unit like that, you actually just light it up like a regular ship. And so that would just be number two on our, on our number pad. If the vessel is not a composite unit, i.e. we're pushing a regular barge, see we're not in the slot, we need that second white. So that's where we're at now, this. If we're alongside it, which uh, somebody asked for me to do, which I'd love to do, uh, do a hip toe. You come to the side, you do cable here, cable here, which I'd have to put a, I have to put a front cable on at some point. And so you would cable here, you cable here, and you'd do a hip toe and pull it like this. I need the same orientation as this. And so uh, that's just uh, what I'm talking about with that. All right, so that is this lighting configuration there. So let's go to the next lighting configuration. So we have four. Four should be towing less than 200 meters. So we're towing a barge, and it's uh, within 200 meters of us, which we should be at all times because what is this? This is a 100-meter long cable. So I'd have to have the huge winch on there anyway to make that work. But I wanted to make this system work with any, uh, with you know, be able to put it on other vehicles. And I need to port it into the Damon 2, uh, 2111. So you see we have standard lighting. Plus, we have this amber light showing that we're towing. All right, and then this would be if the cable is longer than 200 meters. You see we grab the second light, and then we keep the amber on. Uh, what is this one? This one is... What is this? Vehicle... This is vehicle run aground. Yeah, this is vehicle run aground, I believe. So if we, if we run aground, this is what we look like. Two reds over a white. This one is we are in distress, but we are moving, I believe. Again, I could go back through that list, but eight is eight is uh, not under command. So nine is the final one, and this is not under command, but uh, moving. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> um, you know, so those are all the different lighting cho uh, choices. So I thought that was kind of neat to have that system. Let's go ahead and um, let's see if we can't, uh, we'll go on anchor here. And let's see what I want to do for the rest of the episode. Let's see if we can get a mission. I think let's try to grab a mission. And if it's close, we'll do it. If it's not, I will go ahead and do it next time. So I'm going to go ahead and shut down the engines, shut off the gens. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and we'll go down. We'll take a snoozy poo. All right, rescue one casualty and take to the hospital and repair dashboard of small bow rider. Bow rider. All right, and let's go ahead and head up. And I, I redid the interior, so I have to kind of lean over here when I get up. And then I can shut that hatch. So, All right, so let's go ahead and the sun's actually come up. So we're actually getting nice close missions again. I don't know what dictates whether the missions are close or not, but we're getting them close again. A small boat radioed for help. 5,000. Okay, rescue one casualty of the hospital to repair critical damage to the vehicle to prevent the emergency from escalating. Okay, good. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's kind of see where we're at. So we'll uh, we'll put that on there. Let's go ahead and start uh, powering up. Up, oh, engines are off. Okay, I need to make sure my engines are zeroed. There we go. It should be over here. Let's go ahead and put the AP on. So I like to keep the the uh, vessels out into the world as much as possible. You know, I like to use the bed as much as possible, and go back to base. You know, every once in a while. You know, it's one of the nice things of putting the bed on this. You know, that was something I missed in Rio was, you know, his heart. You know, it never could really accelerate time. I always had to go back to base. This is nice that, you know, if if we went way out there and transposed something, we could sleep around there and and uh, wait for a new mission. I would like the new game to have some survival mechanics as an option. You know, I think everything is always good behind a checkbox that you have to decide if you want that or not. 
And so it would be nice, I think, to have some survival mechanics if you wanted it. You know, food and, you know, the ability to need to eat, need to drink. You know, the reason I like that is, you know, say, for example, we're out here doing a bunch of missions, and then we're like, oh, we're low on food. I need to go in, and I need to uh, stop at the store and get some, and you just walk into one of the shops, and you, you get some food items, and you put it in your inventory, and then you put it in, say, a fridge or something, or store it somewhere in the boat, like have a chest. be nice to have backpacks. You could do that sort of thing. It adds another dynamic to the game. It also makes it so that, you know, it, it's a it's a point of emergent gameplay, which I really like. That was something in Escape from Tarkov, which is incredibly important, is, you know, you generally have to, if you spend an entire raid in there, you have to eat and drink. And then between raids, you have to eat and drink. And there have been many times where I can't go grab my, you know, the loot off somebody because I forgot to bring in food with me. And so it really brings an emergent game plan. I know a lot of people get annoyed by it, but again, that's why I think it's good if you have it as a checkbox. You can shut it off if you want. But it also, you know, it's kind of this forced limitations of it is, you know, okay, well, I need to build a, some place to store my food in the boat, you know. And so, you know, for example, you can take a tiny little boat and you don't really need some of these things. So it's nice to kind of have some need for them. Alrighty, so we need a torch. Should have a med kit still on me, I think. I whoop, I was up. What happened there? Why did I end up in the drinky? I think I ended up in the drinky poo. Alright, there we go. Hello, sir. How do? And clear the torch, sir, please. These missions that I like these missions, these are give you something extra to do. And... Oh, there we go, good, good repairs. How are you doing there, guy? Um, just the one rescue, I think. Rescue one casualty, Zang. All right, we're going to uh, hook up to this person, and we will try to stay dry. There we go. All right, we're going to try to do this whole operation staying dry. That will be our new mission. All right, let's go ahead. And so I'm going to I'm gonna center my azipods. Look at my port azipod. What is up with that? See, it's cocked over. Oh, autopilot. That's why. So I'm going to just rotate us. So I'm going to come reverse on port and forward and starboard. Theoretically. What's going on here? Did it screw me up? Okay, the autopilot's still screwed up. I can't control my thrust with the because the autopilot now is screwed. Okay. It needs a pulse because it's it's continually keeping that on. All right, so that's fine. I can I can make this work. So we're gonna have to get wet. You know, what? I'm gonna leave that boat there. We don't need it anyway. So that's something I knew I needed to fix something with the autopilot and I forgot what it was. I have to kind of go out here though. Okay. All right, so I have to re-engage the autopilot to get the engines to run, I think. Yeah, so that's what it is. So what's happening is it's it zeroes my thrust when it gets in a certain range of it. But if I leave that in there, it keeps it zeroed. So what I can I can fix that a couple ways. One is have it a pulse so it taps the button, which is what I'm going to do. But also this um, I don't know if I want that to zero out when it when it uh, when I disconnect the autopilot. This should read a zero essentially. So I should feed zero zero when that's not enabled. So essentially put uh, a couple uh, numerical switch boxes. We'll do that. Add, adding to my to-do list of kind of fixing up. So probably next video we'll do a little bit of uh, work on this. I would like to add a harbor generator. I like to add the def system. I would like to fix the autopilot. 
I think we're pretty good other than that. Doing pretty well here, so. This is dangerous to have the back door open. I'm make sure I shut that. I really can't flood it if the pilot house gets flooded. So this hatch is simulating, so you would have the hatch probably here, actually, but that's right under the, uh, the winch. Right, the winch is right there. And so you'd have it here, and that way, if you needed to uh, crane in some engine parts, you could do that. And that's how you would service your engine, craning in parts like that. So here we are. We're coming right up on it. So, nice, quick, easy missions. Yeah, I think it's often being forced to do things in the game really takes you out of your comfort zone, and it really makes you do these things. Um, I was talking, this was a while ago, but there was a a new player, and they said, you know, why isn't there, like, a, why isn't there a mapping game? And, you know... Why doesn't the GPS just do it for me? And part of it is you have to build it. Now, if, if the game did it for you, would you ever build the GPS? Well, guess what? You know, I never thought, I'd, like I said, I never thought I'd make an autopilot. I made an autopilot because I had to make an autopilot. And now, let's say that's really not your thing. You really are not going to be making autopilots and you don't want to make autopilots. That's what the workshop's for. You can go to the workshop, download an autopilot. You can, you, may, you can play this game and never have built anything at all. Personally, you know, I, I don't think that really is fits with, you know, that's, you know, that's like giving up most of what the game is about if you're not building, but you don't have to, you know, like, for example, I want to, I want to have my own radar. It's from, it's kind of a pain to make a radar and I don't know Lua very well. So I have to learn Lua and I have to do this and a bunch of the Lua screens that I thought I was never going to be able to make, I've made and I never thought I was going to be able to make an autopilot and I've made many on autopilot. And part of it was because the game forced me to do it. If I wanted to get somewhere, I had to make it. You know, if I wanted an autopilot, I had to make it. If I want to know where I am on the map, I have to make it. And so because it forces you to make it, you learn how to make it. And so part of, you know, it's like any of human innovation. The, the only reason why we know how to engineer anything is because we had to or we're going to starve to death or we're going to die because a bear was going to attack us. You know, we, we made a spear because we were getting sick of getting attacked by animals. You know, and so we made a spear to protect ourselves. You know, well, if the animals weren't attacking us, we weren't making a spear. And the same thing with the game is, if the game's not challenging, if, if you know, if it just handed you everything, well, you're not going to learn how to do anything. And so that's one of the reasons why I like this more complex form of gaming. You know, I remember watching tutorials back in the day, and I was like, there's no way I'm ever going to be able to make a microcontroller. None of this makes sense to me. And it was it was giving me anxiety. And then I started really understanding it. And that's one of the reasons I started making tutorial videos was, you know, I saw some deficits in some of the tutorials or some things that weren't, you know, engineeringly speaking, right. And so I just, you know, from an engineering perspective, correct. So I decided that I would, you know, I would do the work to help the community out. And that's why I started making tutorials and why I started doing a lot of these YouTube videos was, you know, I didn't know anything until somebody helped me, and I figured I would, you know, return the favor by doing it myself. And I could either be part of the problem or part of the solution. And I said, you know what, I'll be part of the solution. I'll help the community by making some videos and demystifying some of this stuff. You know, so when I learn something, I try to make a tutorial to help others because I remember at one point that was where I was. Okay, let's see. So I'm trying to get this. So see, this is engaging the autopilot, even though I'm not there. What's the distance? 1.2 nautical miles. So I could power up, but I can't. If I disengage that, can I power up? Okay, yeah. So, all right. So I'm just re looking through what I have to do to fix this. So it's not a big deal. So a little bit of cash there. Some nice close missions here. You know, and I, I take for granted a lot of people don't know how to navigate. You know, it, it's easy for me. I used to navigate all across the country flying, you know, and so it makes sense to me how to navigate. You know, I can easily navigate the map by looking north, south, east, west, by just using the sun and looking at the map. I go, okay, north, south, east, west, all right, we're headed to the south. So we had a little bit over here, so the sun is right there. Put, this, put it right so it's 90 degrees to us. 
you know, these are all things I take for granted. So, you know, every once in a while I see in the forums somebody's like, you know, especially when, you, when you're starting a new game, you see how close these are. It's like he was right there and the other one was right there. They're super close. And to a certain extent, you're like, how does, how does somebody not know how to navigate? Well, you take for granted the things that you know, you know, and so it makes sense why people don't know. It, it makes sense to me why, you know, people like having a moving map on their vehicle. I don't. You know, it, it takes all the challenge out of it for me, so I, don't, I never put one on. But again, I have, I would say, an above average navigation ability because of my training. You know, so I love that part of the game that, you know, it doesn't hold my hand. I can shut off all map icons if I wanted and make it so that I really have to navigate on my own, and I love that. All right, so uh, I think that was a good episode. There's some nice missions. Tug's, Tug's working well here, able to really get... Um, you know, do some of these missions, really functioning well. Just a couple small hiccups here, and I'm really enjoying it. So there is something on the horizon with the build challenge, uh, making a, a – we're going to start our second vessel. I already started a little work on it. You can watch the video for that for the build challenge Charlie. I'm uh, not quite ready to do that yet, but um, – Really enjoying this this tugboat, and I hope you guys are as well, and I will see you in the next one.